around the yard. Finally, it's warm outside. You can see I've been keeping up on the grass and stuff. Um, and today I have an idea. And I'm going to have to make another video, sadly. I'm really mad about it. I'm not going to say it yet because that's going to be either later today after this video is uploaded or tomorrow. Or a day where it's not, it doesn't look like it's going to rain. But. Um, all I'll say, all that I will say about it is that it's about the motorcycle, and that's it, okay? But, so, we got a push mower from one of the people that we are friends with, and they rent a house that we have, I'm not going to say who, because I'm sure that they don't want to really be named, specifically named, but there's some life hacks I guess you could say that you can actually do with a push mower and yeah it might not might not seem like it but there's some stuff that you can actually hack about a lot some life hacks about a push mower that you probably wouldn't really think of um I gotta have to make another video sadly very sadly it's about the bike um, but today I just thought, hey, I got an idea. I mean, I've been cutting the grass lately. I've been push mowing it and weed whacking it a little bit. Did some weed whacking yesterday. Ran it out of fuel. And one thing you never want to do is running, run a two-stroke engine out of fuel. That's just never a good idea. But <clears throat> some life hacks, I guess you could say, that you can do with a push mower or a weed whacker, I guess you could say. And the thing is, they're not that complicated to do. I mean, there really isn't. It shouldn't be. So, let's get started. So, on any push mower nowadays, they have um, a handle that you have to push down to pull on the cord. And the thing is, sometimes, like, yeah, I, I want to go and get a drink or something, and I don't feel like trying to yank the cord again to get my lawnmower started especially if you have a uh, push mower that really doesn't like start easily but so um one of the things that you can do is that you can take either a binder clip or whatever you want to call this just a clip and then stuff it on there and it will keep that uh lever down i'm like this one this bar is too big on mine or the better way to do it the better idea to do it is to take some mechanic wire mechanic mechanics wire wrap it around itself and put it on there and it'll hold the lever down so you can leave the mower if you want to go and do something real quick like get a drink or whatever but even that you should never really leave a mower unintended for that long so that's hack number one hack number two is I'm pretty sure that almost every every mower has it and it's these you can tighten these and loosen these. They're on the bottom of the top handle. But what you can do with these is you can loosen those and then you can fold this down. I'm sure everybody that ever owned and used a pusher motor knows about that. But that's just a thing. Um, another one is let's say your mower, like I said earlier, never likes to start, start easily. And of course, it's, it's not the electric start ones that, that people get, which is kind of lazy and pathetic. Um, and it's just a pull cord that you have to yank on it for the next 15 minutes to try to get it started in it. You have to prime it like 20,000 times to actually get it started. Like this one, it's not the easiest to start, but it's not the hardest to start. It likes to be primed for about any time you use this one, unless you just used it seconds ago and you accidentally shut it off or it just kind of turned off or something. Um, you have to pull the cord, but on every lawnmower, I'm pretty sure these days, most of them, always have a priming button. Always. Push it in sometimes. It's like push three times to prime or however. This one likes to, to, after a week of not being used, this is like a 10 push prime. I think, but if you're lucky, you can get in like six or seven. I did that yesterday after like two weeks of not using it. But who cares? But. What I'm trying to get at is, as you can see, this uh, 
this goes into the crankshaft, this connects to the crankshaft of the engine. So whenever you start it, it's like basically ro rolling a car that's in first gear down a hill and hoping to God that it starts. It's basically, you're spinning the engine over yourself. And you're doing it mechanically. I mean, technically. You're, you're, you're not doing it mechanically, but you are doing it mechanically. It's just, it doesn't make much sense anymore. I don't know why. But you're doing the work to start it, and then it's doing its own thing. But if your mower never likes to start, and you like, and you want to get a really long pull out of that thing, because technically the way to start a mower, or to start anything, is in this, this kind of thing. You want to get the four strokes into it. The fuel um, being sucked in, the power, the next stroke, the up stroke for the spark, that makes the power stroke that makes the piston go back down and then have the exhaust stroke that pushes all the exhaust fumes out of the cylinder that's the most you want to get out of this so technically if i were to let this video go for another week start it right now like that prime it 10 times prime, pull that pull it like that it it'll be it won't be the easiest thing to start but it won't be the hardest thing to start but if you um, put the lever down here, like this one was before, uh, whenever we got it, this thing took like five, ten minutes to figure out how to get this thing in here correctly. Um, it was down here and it would flop around and it was loud and stuff and it was a little bit annoying. That's why I put it back up here. But now because I got the thing start after it hadn't been started in four years, it's... It's a, it's, it's a pretty cheap mower, but it's 6.5 horsepower. That's about, that's how much horsepower the go-kart is. Put that, if you had a crankshaft going out beside the engine, you could put that on a go-kart and run it any time. It'll just be like a little bit weird, like, why do you got a lawnmower engine connected to a go-kart? So you want to put that thing down here, so whenever you go and reach for it, you can get the longest yank out of that thing so you can get as many strokes of the piston in there as at once that's I'll, I'll try to do that because i still need to finish up a little bit of the yard today but i'll try to do that another hack that you can do is how, how about even that really doesn't help that much if you put the cable down there what you can do is you can take off this plate that's in front of the carburetor and you take this thing off and you're right at the carburetor you can access the carburetor really easily and you could put a choke on it you could put a filter on it but you can squirt starting fluid into it so much easier like this one i'm pretty sure that the front of the carburetor is either this way or this way not this way or anything um but you can take that thing off and you'll be able to prime it on your own and you know just kind of get rid of the priming button just carry around a little piece of little can of starting fluid whatever you want to do so another I guess you could say hack but it really isn't but one of the things that I did is because a lot of these mowers are almost impossible to raise lift and raise but as you can see I rigged mine so it could be raised and lowered really easy like I have the front of it on the highest things because sometimes the grass here is very thick and you want to blow all that grass out of the front Mine doesn't actually have a cut open in any of and in it anywhere. But what you want to do is you want to sp spray some like liquid wrencher, WD-40 or a PB blaster is what I used to free up a lot of these. And it also helps if you spray the back of the out the wheel to onto that goes onto the axle. That also helps a lot to be able to push around easier. Um, I don't even know how many of these I've done, so I'm not even going to put on YouTube, like 15 life hacks or whatever. Another thing that you can do is I don't have a block or anything on me right now, so I'm just going to use the back of the freaking weed whacker. It'll be able to wear it, weigh it down probably. Oh yeah, definitely. But another thing that you can do is on this mower, the oil access thing is on the bottom of the mower usually and it's 
might not be able to see it, but it's this. It's uh, it's, you're not your normal bolt. It's a, uh, I think it's like a three, it's either a three fourth or one half drive. I'm pretty sure it's one half. Even that's probably a lot, but you see, there's a cover on this. There's almost always a cover that covers this and everything under here so it doesn't get bombarded with grass. But what you can do is what I did. I didn't do it, necessarily do it. I don't even know where it went, but you can take off that cover and you'll be able to access that really easily and be able to sharpen the blades really easy, the blade really easily and stuff. So, yeah. Another thing that, one thing that you never want to do or if you have to do, you don't want to do much, is put the lawnmower on it, its side. Especially on the side that the carburetor's on, because it'll flood the car, the engine, and you'll never get it started. And you'll get it, you could get it started, but it's not gonna really run well for a little while. Because it's gonna have that engine. It's like cranking the idle on it up to 4,000 RPM a second. Uh, I really can't think of much of anything else. For the push mower at the moment, sorry. Oh yeah, if you have a bad back or something, I saw it on this one YouTube channel called Project Farm. And so you can take these, the top, these top covering covers off 100% completely. And the thing is, if you do that, and whenever you do that, you um you can access the cr top crankshaft. There's a bolt up here, actually, and it's in like a little can, I guess you'd say. But <clears throat> take that off, and you have like a drill or something. You can turn the engine over with a drill or an impact gun or whatever. You don't really want to use an impact gun because it's going to loosen that bolt and then your engine's going to come apart. So if you do do it, try to use it on something. Use something that isn't super duper powerful that will break that bolt or whatever you want to say. Okay. Oh yeah, another thing that you can do is probably not really all that advised, especially with this one, is mine doesn't have a chute on the sides and has it on the back what you could do is i was thinking of doing this but i just thought playing that's a bad idea but what you can do is you can of course lift this thing up but whenever you're doing that you're putting yourself at risk so if you have one like this which most of them are like this you really don't want to do it all that much also because it'll blow all the grass onto you and stuff but you can drill a hole, two holes at the top of this, like in the corners, and then um, use mechanics wire to uh, hold it up a little bit, and then it'll blow the grass out, not clogging up your mower. I thought about doing it with this one, but it's just really not a good idea, especially this one, because it blows out the back. You can cut a hole in the sides, or in the front, the sides is probably the best idea not the front so yeah, I think that's it for the push mower yeah oh yeah another thing if your your push mower is like me mine and the handle back here is like super wobbly and I'm sure it's like that for a reason but what you can do is you could probably put some spot welds or something on the inside of that to help it keep it from like you know wiggling around so you can push it a lot easier so yeah let's go on to the weed whacker but yeah another thing that you could do with a push mower is if you're like me and you have thick grass at your house it's what they, everybody's always been told to do that nobody ever listens to well i gotta tell you again you lift up the front of the mower see that's all there is to it just lift up the front of the mower and then you continue pushing it. It might be a little bit weird to do it at first, but you could get to it. So I'm gonna start it right now with the uh, cord up here. So 
Hopefully it will start easily. So I'm gonna do three first, of course. Because that's about how many you're supposed to do. So you're yak on it. And then come on, start. Oh yeah, another thing that you can do whenever you're trying to start a lawnmower is instead of just having it on the ground like that, you can lift it up in front of it up. Making it so it it'll do its thing easier. And yeah, another thing, you might be wondering what the handle on the back of the mower does. And like me almost tearing open your, the top of your finger on this mower in specific, um, you get to see the inside of a mower basically. And this handle, the way it stops the engine is you know you're whenever you're riding pushing it around the yard cutting your grass you're you're putting it under a load but whenever you put that on it basically breaks whenever this thing goes up you have engaged an engine brake whenever it's going down you have disengage the engine brake and you will start that engine but with it up you see this thing is never gonna start. This has tension, and I'm gonna probably break the cable. Put it down. I mean, it's as easy as cake. Yes. Hi, whatever. God. Yeah. I guess I'm going to do five or two or three or whatever. One, two, three. It's not even one. Oh yeah, not like on this thing. I had to redo redo the spark plug wire because it had been it kind of broke at some point. So, oh yeah, one thing you never want to do with any kind of engine or motor or whatever is after I've done it, I've learned my lesson. It's never a good idea. But whenever you start something where it's ran for a while, you never put your fingers on around anything on the cylinder head or on the muffler. Whenever you want to it's just it's just not really all that fun. And sometimes it'll backfire. Yeah. One time I had this thing backfire on me and it was so loud I thought it was a tire popping because it was that loud and it scared me. time yesterday whatever I was starting it for the first time I almost got started a few times but it didn't want to so it took me like two or three minutes to get started but now whenever I was pulling that cable one of the cool things that was actually happening was whenever you feel whenever you pull the cable you could feel it the piston going up and down and what was happening whenever I was doing that is I pumped it four times like ten times on me and I pulled the cable ten times and it was making combustion. And you could see the small little puffs coming out the side of it, but it really wouldn't want to start. But I did it 10 times and it would just pop, pop. And it looked like somebody was smoking a cigar and it was actually kind of cool looking, but this time I'm actually going to start it for you. So, watch a 12 year old kid start a lawnmower. It'll be fine.
about that. And you can leave it running. Really playing around how I what just playing when it started. I couldn't get it started. I was just playing. But like I said, if you get it down here, you can get it. Whacker. This is how you're supposed to actually hold a weed whacker. I have the camera on a tripod right now. I'm never going to be able to hold the camera while I'm holding the weed whacker correctly. But one of the things that is unique about this, give me a second, about this uh, weed whacker, and it's not really all that unique, I'm sure that every other weed whacker is like this. That two-stroke and not electric is that you got the pull cord at the back on the back of the engine and everything so you might it might have just died on you or something you don't feel like taking it off to shove it up put it on the ground and then put your foot on it and just yank that cord as hard as you can but with this one it's really not all that hard to start you get it primed correctly wow I'm bad at this but what you can do I'm not gonna do it because of how this thing is out of fuel and because it's two stroke I don't want to run it without any engine oil in the fuel or anything. That's the thing about two stroke is the reason that it's two stroke is because it's two strokes. I mean it's technically three stroke because you're gonna have to have at least three strokes or two strokes. But I'm pretty sure that it's two stroke because all the fuel and everything goes in after the last exhaust goes up, you got your spark, and then it blows it, pushes the piston down, and the exhaust goes out. But maybe you don't feel like putting down your uh, lid whacker to start it. What you can do is I did it, and it's not the easiest thing on planet Earth to do, but it's medium ish but what you can do is instead of putting it on the ground like I said and and just yank it on the cord what you can do is you could push down on it and uh, you push down on it push down on it and then you use both hands of one pushing down on it and the other one on the cord so whatever you push down on it instead of just letting it fall back up that's just physics you push it down and then you yank up on the cord and then it'll start it i don't really want to start this right now because like i said it's out of fuel oh my back Jesus. another thing that is kind of a good idea to do that I'm sure that almost all weed whackers like I said have this is you could put a little razor blade on the catcher thing or whatever you want to call this but you could put like a little piece of metal or a razor blade down here so whenever you uh, start it and you need more cable 
to start it, and then you smack it down on some something hard like concrete, and then you and then it because gravity somehow works here. It's like a centrifugal clutch. It pushes out or disengages or whatever you want to say, and then lets the core go out. And so with most with this weed whacker what it did before my dad put this on is that it would uh actually just plain straight on hit the housing that it was in this is why this is so messed up over here and over just inside of it it would just hit that and you would have to come down with like a something just to cut it with but whenever you stomp down on it you now as this thing is spinning it it just hits this thing and chops it off it's basically the opposite of grass cutting it's weed whacker cutting i guess you could say it's a little cheap but another thing is is that a lot of this one it's specific has a really stupid gas cap that you have it's just kind of stupid so you have to lift up on this turn it and then you yank it off it's not that easy because there's a little uh tab on there see it you want to push down on it again grab it you might want to do it multiple times grab it and then just kind of lift it off and it'll be super easy another thing you want to attach it on the inside of the tank so you don't lose your all your fuel and something or something not fuel you the cap because of how small these things are and this is another thing about it stupid to get back on you have to push down and then you can get it on right to push down it spins the ends this thing and then you turn it on your own it it took me 15 minutes to figure that out yesterday because so I was trying to get the thing off so I could put some fuel in it and it just took me forever now it's gonna take forever to get back on yeah there we go. Floop. That's another thing that you can do. I'm pretty sure all weed whackers have a choke. But sometimes finding the choke is a little bit weird. Because it's in a weird place. This is right on the carburetor. Choke's on. Choke's off. Done. Um, uh... I don't know. There really isn't anything else I can think of. On a weed whacker. It's not like you're really gonna do much of anything. It's a weed whacker. Oh yeah, you can also attach a clip down here to be able to hold it better. And stuff. <coughs> Yeah, that's all, I can, that's all I can think of. Another thing you might want to know, your ratio mix for a T-stroke. So. Yeah. But yeah, that's all I can think of. Off the top of my head. So, I'll go and do that lawnmower thing before it starts to rain again. And hopefully by that time it won't be raining. But yeah, there's only one problem with that lawnmower thing that you put the handle all the way down onto the engine itself is that it could melt the handle, it could burn through the handle, and it also shakes the crap out of the handle and it gets really loud and annoying after a while. So, let's go do that now. I don't know, where's the record button? Sorry. No, people, I lied. Okay. But yeah, I lied. I said I was going to do this in another video. But I changed my mind because it was going to make me mad if I didn't do it. Because I was going to forget about it and not do it or something. But two weeks the bike has been done. Maybe not even two weeks. 
probably around a week and a half. Went to the dance on Friday. School dance. Had fun and stuff. Get in the car, there's a helmet in the back of the car. My dad said he was gonna pick me up in the Trans Am. So I'm expecting my dad to pick me up in the Trans Am. Then I get a text from my mom saying, I'm outside, I'm waiting for you. So I say, give me 10 minutes. Get out there and I'm like, and so then there is, like I said, the helmet in the back of the car. So I ask, what's the helmet doing in the back of the car? And my sister turns around and says, oh, the bike racked again. And I'm like, you're kidding me, right? Seriously, why is there a helmet back here? And then she said, the bike racked again. Uh, and then my mom said, it's really not all that bad. Uh, I don't know how it's stuck in break or whatever. It's wrong with it. And I flipped out whenever I got home. I flipped, I 100% completely flipped out. I have anger built up inside of me. And then I just 100% completely flipped out. But so I got home, waited for my dad outside. See it coming on a flatbed. So, I mean... I might not look all that bad. Yeah. Still a motorcycle. Well, let's take a look at it from front. The windshield is completely broken in half. New windshield, $500. Maybe even that. That's probably not even how much it'll cost. It'll probably cost like $100. But broken windshield. Scuffs. Uh, the crash bar looks bent over here. This thing, the lower got shoved in. Some guy had the brilliant idea of whenever it, it was on the ground, somebody had the brilliant idea of yanking on the back of the tour pack, so it, it cracked the paint in. Pretty big crack on there. You might not be able to see it, but it's it's a crack there. Um, but the, of course, there's the brake situation. It's the back brakes. There's nothing left in the front back brakes. We think this is bent back over. Um, <clears throat> but, and damages. Probably the worst thing is that. Crack the fairing. The fairing, the fairing, the fairing, the fairing. fairing. Um, oh yeah, and it's also scuffed from my dad's boots. Ow, my foot. But, yeah. And I'm mad, I mean. That was the first time my sister had gotten on it since the last wreck. They were going down the road. Some person... I mean, the motorcycle is white. And has lights on it. You can see this thing from about a mile away. But yeah, it had the... Uh, low beams on. Spotlights. Everything. Um, these on the side lights. Got da got dashboard was lit up. Uh, this was lit up. Uh, you're not really gonna miss that bike, but the person said that they were look watching the tractor trailer that was going down the road. But the fact of the matter is, it was at an intersection. And then the other fact of the matter is, she was also on her phone. The other fact of the matter is, she was also young. The other fact of the matter is, that she didn't file a claim until about a week later. And the other fact of the matter is, is there probably another two months of work left in this thing again? I mean, there's probably only one month or maybe even two weeks into it, but it has to go down to the Harley shop to be inspected and stuff to see all how much it'll cost. But the back wheel's gotta come off probably if we can actually get it off of the brakes. Fairing comes off again. Uh, probably gonna get another crash bar for it at some point. Uh, so, I mean, this is mad. I mean, the thing is, it was at an intersection. So people, anybody that drives cars, it's just anybody. If you're ever at an intersection and you see anything there, always think to yourself, something ba very bad can happen. There's a good way and a bad way. And yeah, the good way is usually how people go. But every once in a while, there's the bad way. 
And whatever the bad way happens, it's not good. So. Well, that's all I got. I tried to make this, that part of the video, like, 15 times a few days ago. And this camera, I'm, I'm using a different camera, and this is the first time I've actually used it for a video video. But, using a different camera, it kept running out of battery, or just stopped recording entirely. So, but yeah, that's all that I have for today. So, but yeah, think of what I thought, said, and obey traffic laws, yield, yield to people, yield even more to people that are on motorcycles, share the road, but that's all I have for today. And that's out here, the Trans Am. But do what you do. <laughs> I was just thinking about what it would have been like if I just my dad just rolled out in the driveway in the Trans Am and I ran over there and put stuck the camera in his face. I don't know, he would have probably been like, stop it, back off. Whatever. Um but <laughs> Do what you guys do best and stay awesome and don't kill people. Don't run into people during traffic and stuff, so. Yeah! Bye!